Hi everyone, my name is Alexander Bravikov. I am the Custom Experience Team Lead in Open Design Islands and we continue our webinar series. Today's webinar will be dedicated to BMAWI.net wrappers. During today's webinar, we will cover the following points. We'll provide a brief introduction. We'll provide an overview of BMAWI.net archive content. We'll get acquainted with ODBM database structure and using this information, we will illustrate data extraction. Next, we'll get acquainted with the OD commands approach. Through all those points, we'll be creating a BMAV.NET based application. And finally, after this, we'll have a questions and answers session. BMAV.NET is the most recent among the RAP archives. It was introduced in 23.1 release and uses the same generation approach as all the other wrap archives for all the other ODE toolkits. BMAV.NET Archive contains all the necessary DLLs and managed assemblies that are required to work with it. Additionally, it contains a set of pre-built examples that can be run and evaluated. And all the projects of all those examples are stored in the solution file that can be also opened and evaluated. Okay, let's switch and review the BMAV archives content. First of all, you can see that there are a lot of DLLs. They are both native DLLs and managed assemblies. As you see, for every type there is one C++ native DLL and two managed DLL for .NET Platform and .NET 5. The similar situation is with the pre-built examples. We see two similar examples for each type and one is for .NET Platform, the other one is for .NET 5. Now let's switch to Platforms folder and here we can find the example solutions that contains all the projects of all the examples but currently for .NET Platform only. Net5 solution examples is in our future plans. Now we'll create a simple console bmavi.net application. For download prerequisites, please refer our previous webinar. Here today we will cover the bmavi.net specific settings and after we make them all, we will provide some code to read an RVT file from disk. Now, let us switch back to the example solution. Here we'll create our bmav.net application. It will be a console c -sharp application. After we create a new project, let's review and check its settings. First of all, platform and configuration. Next, output path. It should point to exe vc16 amd64 dll to reference all the necessary DLLs. Next, working directory in the debug tab. After we check the project settings, we need to append the necessary references. And first we start with TD Suite Core MGD assembly. Next, we append three assemblies related to examples to facilitate the examples creation. And next we append four assemblies starting with OD Suite. Those are BMAV.NET specific assemblies. And the first one, the loader, is responsible for operations related to model loading. The common one for some common operations. Database as it goes from its name for operations related to ODBM database. And the last one, the JSON, we'll talk about it a little bit later. The simple code that we'll append to our BMAV.NET application will be quite straightforward. We'll create a services object. We'll use it to read the RVT file from this ODBM database object. We'll get some property of ODBM database. And that's it. Uh, as for ODBM database structure, we'll cover it a little bit later. Now, after we read an RVT file to ODBM database object, let's review its structure. ODBM database structure represents the structure of the file which contains of streams and storages. 
Simply speaking, storage is a similar to folder and stream is simple, similar to file in the file system. And ODBM database structure represents it in form of tables and elements in those tables. Now let's get back to ODBM application to have a better view on the database structure. As you see, database has the key elements representing storages and streams and uh, these elements that represent storages are mainly tables and as you see they can have either other elements or they may have uh, other tables inside. Switching to element table, we can see that there are elements and they are grouped according to their type. And we can see that elements of the same type have the same class name. We'll use this information further on for our data extraction logic. Let us switch back to our application code. And as you see, having the ODBM database object, we can call different methods and get different tables similar to the ones that we saw in ODBM application. For now, let's just call a simple method to output something, some information of the ODBM database and uh, write it to console. Append the code to get this information, build the application and run it. Now you can see the output. Considering our goal of data extraction, let's have a look at the element table. As you see, in ODBIM application, it even has a separate tab where the elements of the element tables are grouped according to the category. Now, let's form the criteria for our data extraction. We will extract the elements that refer to walls and the condition will be that the class name of the element should contain the wall. Okay, let's start implementing our extraction logic and let's get the element table from the ODBM database. Next, let's append the code to iterate through the model table. We get the class name of the elements of the model table and here let's append the condition so that we extract only the elements that are related to walls. Or in other words, contain the word wall in the DNA. Additionally, let's append some code to output some of the properties of such elements. Now let's build the application, uh, run it, forward the output to a dedicated file. And now let's open the file and see that we extract the elements and output the properties of the wall related elements. Now, let's say a couple of words about the OD commands approach. As you understand, cross calls from managed to native code and data marshalling from managed code to native and from native to managed back is quite resource consuming. OD commands approach allows to move some business logic to the C++ part and thus it not only simplifies your final .NET code, but additionally it improves the performance as reduces the number of cross calls. Now let's switch back to the source code of our application and we'll append the command call. First of all, we need to load the model that has our command. And next, we create the X string EO. This object contains usually different parameters for necessary for the comment. Um, in case of export, it may be the name of the output file and other export options. Xtring EO object is necessary for us to create the co comment context object. And after we are done with the comment context, we are able to call the comment using the special execute method, specifying two arguments, the name of the comment and the comment context. That's it. Now let's build uh, and run the application. You can see that additionally, we created one more JSON file. Okay, to sum up. Appending an OD command call consists of three simple steps. First, you need to load the model with the command. It may be an OD model or it may be your custom model. 
Next, you need to create the command context. And after this, you need to call the command execution. You can get acquainted with the full list of the ODE comments in our documentation and in our examples. But now, we would like to pay your special attention to one of them. Let's repeat similar steps as the ones for the JSON export, but this time we'll load an IFC export model. In a similar way, we create a string I.O. and common context. Please pay attention to an alternative way of command call. Let's build the example and run it. We get an IFC file as an output. Let us open it in a free open IFC viewer. You can see the result. Get back to code. As you see, just these four lines of code changed our example to a standalone Autodesk Revit to IFC converter. Please pay attention that IFC export model is provided as a project, not as a pre-built model. So you will need to build it yourself. You can either use it as is or even customize the export procedure according to your requirements. Hope you will leverage the advantages of the common approach in your projects. Ok, I hope that our application creation steps and our comments were straightforward and clear and now we will be glad to answer your questions. Ok, that's all. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. We hope that today's webinar will be helpful for your projects. Please do not hesitate to address us, we will be glad to answer your questions.